This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Let's take a look at what I think is one of the most powerful panels in Adobe Photoshop. It's called Layers. Actually, I have three. I call them the Trilogy of Power, Layers, Channels, and Paths. Now, although we're going to spend a couple of chapters kind of weaving in and out of layers, in reality, this whole lesson series is about layers because you can't do much without them. Now, go ahead and go into the exercise files for this particular chapter. And once you get there, open up Layers panel. Let's just take a walk around the Layers panel. I am in the Essentials workspace. Now I'm going to move it over here so we can see it. Get a nice, good look at this amazing panel. Let's make that a little bit bigger. The Layers panel has evolved through Photoshop. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, it's almost hard for me to remember this, there was a time where Photoshop did not have layers. Now, those were dark, dark times, I want to tell you. But then when they came out with layers, they gave us a maximum of 100. And I can't tell you how many times when I was working on something like maybe an animation sequence where I actually needed more than 100 layers. But they've solved that. We now have something like 8,000 layers at last count. So you've got more layers than you would ever want to use. And that's an interesting thing, because sometimes people ask me the question, kind of like, why did Adobe do that? I mean, who's going to use 8,000 layers? And the point is this. If they give you more than you could ever need, like we've got brushes now that go to tens of thousands of pixels in width. Why? Because, again, if they give us more than what we need, we're not restricting our creativity. We have everything we need. So. That's probably one of the reasons they went to 8,000. I don't have 8,000 here, but I have a couple. I've got a layer one, copy three, copy two, and a copy one. Right now, they're all on top of each other. We're going to solve that in a second. I've got a text layer that says the layers panel and a background, which is not a layer. That's the background. Let's start at the top and work our way down. Up here, of course, you click that, it closes it. So if you don't see the layers panel, you should see it in the Essentials workspace. However, you could go to the Word window and bring it right back by clicking Layers. All of your panels are located right here. And there she is back again. This button right here that looks kind of like a double arrow facing to the left collapses the Layers panel or any other panel into a very small area. And if you click that again, it will open it back up. This button, which is in all panels, is options for that particular panel. And if I click it, you can see you have a lot of things. Now, many of the options that you see here can be performed directly in the Layers panel. You don't have to go here, like New Layer, Duplicate Layer, Deleting a Layer, Creating Groups, Converting to Smart Objects, Clipping Masks, Merging. We've got several versions of Merge, even Animation Options. Let's go down to Panel here, Panel Options. There's not that many. In Panel Options, you can choose a different thumbnail size. To me, what I have is fine. But if you want it larger, that's up to you. Or if you don't want one, you can turn it off. This option here is interesting. Now, you'll notice that each one of my thumbnails is an exact replica of the space that we see right here. If I turn on Layer Bounds, let me show you this one. Watch the thumbnails. Well, these layers right here, let me turn off background so you can see this. Those layers only contain that rectangle. So the thumbnail only shows me that rectangle. I usually like it the other way, so I'm going to turn that back on again. But again, that's an option you can choose to use or not. And down here, we have things like default masks and expanding on effects and copy to copy layers. So the reason you see copy two and copy three here is because that's on. Some of this other stuff we'll talk about later. Let's just go ahead and click OK for now. OK, so we're all settled in. Let me show you a brand new feature in the Layers panel. And that's a search option right up here. For example, I don't have four or five or six layers. I've got 500 layers. I'm working and working and working, and I've got all this stuff going on. And I say to myself, I need to find the layer named whatever that name is. We'll use background as an example. So we go to kind, and you can see name, effect, mode, attribute, or color. If we go into name, I can actually start typing in the word background. And all layers that begin with the letter B will then show up. And when that first came out in the 6 beta, I kind of wondered really how important searching layers would be, but I found it very valuable. 
Now we can turn it off right here, and that turns off all of it if you want to turn it back off. Or let's go back up here to kind, because you have these options here now. For example, show me all layers that have an effect on them. We don't have any, but we do have a type layer. Oh, Andy, I've got about 15 type layers, and I want to get to them really quick. And I can click that button, and all my type layers will be displayed. You've got all these different options. You can turn it on and off anytime you want to. Let's go ahead and select a layer here. That's layer three. Let's pick up our move tool and start playing around over here too. If I decide to move it, the only thing that moves, obviously, is the selected layer. Let's go to layer one, and let's go ahead and pull that out too. Layers are fundamentally different than they are in the real world. Now, like me, you may have started out in things like oils and watercolors, and I did when I was really young, nine, ten years old. When I work on an oil painting, I layer my oils. But once those dry, the party's over. They're locked together like one huge group. Layers in Photoshop are like thin pieces of acetate. And each piece can be painted on, but even after, in a sense, the paint dries, we still have total control over what's going on. Now, let's look at some of these options down here. You've got this one that I absolutely love. It's called Blending Modes. We're going to spend a lot of time on Blending Modes, but it allows me to take one layer and the aspects of that layer, like its color, and blend it into another layer. That's a very powerful feature. I used to teach an entire semester course at university just on that one button. Opacity probably speaks for itself in terms of if I click this button, this is one way of about four you can do this, and I drag it this way, I can change the opacity of the active layer. No great news there, I'm sure. I can come up here and type a number in. I want 90, I want 80. I can use my up and down arrow keys to go one percentage point out of 100 at a time, or I can hold the shift key down with the up and down arrow keys and go 10 at a time. There's a lot of different ways we can access this information and change it. And incidentally, anytime, any place in Photoshop that you see something like this with a number that you can change, you can probably use any of those things I just told you about. Now down here we have a locking mechanism. The locking mechanism for layer one right now, if I click this one, that means lock transparent pixels. Let me demonstrate that to you. I'm going to leave it off for now. I'm going to come over here and pick up my paintbrush tool, and I'm going to come over here and begin painting. Now, the reason it looks like it looks is because I am painting in one layer that's below those other two. But I don't want to do that, really. That's kind of dumb. I'm going to press Command Z, undo, which I love. I wish life had an undo button. Now I'm going to turn that on. Now watch what happens. No paint anywhere until I come into contact with something in that layer that has already been painted. Lock transparent pixels. Let me go ahead and undo that. Let's get back up here, turn that off. This one is locked from painting altogether. Don't mess with my layer. I got it just the way I want it. Don't change it. This one prevents you from moving it. So you could say, don't move, don't paint, or don't move and lock transparent pixels. You've got your choice here. And this one is, I don't want you to touch anything. Lock everything down. No moving, no painting, no blending modes, no nothing. It's up to you. This last fill, which has been there for a while, is kind of interesting, because it does something different than opacity, but not yet. Because if I go to opacity again, just to demo this, and come back again, and then we come to this one and do the same thing, doesn't really look any different, does it? Just does the same thing. It will do something different if you apply a layer effect to that, and we'll get into that later. Down here we have all our layers, but below them are our last set of buttons. This button is a chaining button that's been moved. It used to be part of the layer panel right up here. But let's say I want to move all three of these layers at the same time. So I click on this one, and I shift click on this one to select them in a contiguous set. If you hold the command key down, you could select non contiguous, but of course they're going to move if I choose the right tool, that is. But that's a temporary solution because I can come back and begin working, and then I come back here and accidentally thinking I've got them all and only move one, and that's what undo is for. Let's select them all again, and let's go into this button right here, which is a chain. Now you see the chain option here. You can still select just one, but in moving, they will move as a unit. And to turn that off, you must select them all again and turn that off. 
This button right here, and we do need to select just one single layer to activate that, is for, of course, our effects. This button right here creates a mask. This button right here is for an adjustment layer. This button's for a group. And this button is to create a new layer. And of course, this one is to get rid of a layer. Now, let me show you a couple of tricks here before we move out of this lesson. Number one, let's say I want to show you this layer right here and I want to turn off everything else. Show hide button. So I have to click here, 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 and here. And that's not hard, but I don't want to do that. I know what I want to do. I want to turn off everything but this layer. So hold down the Alt key and click on the Show Hide button on the layer you want to view, and it will automatically turn off, doesn't matter, 8,000 layers if you got them, turn them all off. If you all click again, it will turn them back on for you. That's kind of nice. A couple of tricks just to kind of help you out, and there's more coming, but these shortcuts can really help you get more efficient in a complex program. So that's the Layers panel. We took a spin around it, kind of looked at some of the preferences and options. On to the next.